What's up and welcome to Jaipur, India. My name's Luke Martin with ChopstickTravel.com and today is day two of our Indian street food series. If you didn't check out yesterday's episode, it was a good one. We had some of Jaipur's best chaps. That is just a flavor bomb. It doesn't look like much from the outside appearance wise, but once you break into that, that is so ridiculously flavorful. Mm. We also had some of the best chai that I've ever drank at Sahu Chai Restaurant. In my opinion, the only way to start your day here in India is with a cup of chai. Oh yeah, and that's just the perfect way to start your day in India. And also we visit the Nahargar Fort for some incredible views over the city. This place is absolutely mind-blowing. It's so beautiful and I've never seen anything quite like this. Today we have another full day of eating planned. We are just in a tuk-tuk heading for breakfast now. The perfect way to start your day here in India is with a lassi. So lassi we had yesterday too. It's just this yogurt, curd based drink, a little bit of sugar, some ice, and then all mixed up. This place is extremely famous. It's just called Lassi Walla. We will put all of the information for the places we visit today down in the description box. But this spot is always popular with the locals and the tourists because they just serve a phenomenal lassi. So they've actually got a huge pot of fresh curd right out front and they are mixing it with some automatic device that mixes up the curd and ice and sugar. So just check this out. You can see there's like actually a film on top. So they fill it with the yogurt base drink here and then they put a little bit of the kind of lassi skin on top. So let me grab a little piece of that try by itself. Oh yeah. And drink. Mm. Oh man. It's extremely refreshing. A little bit sour too. Oh that's good. This is just a plain lassi so no additional ingredients but I know in India here it's popular you can get mango lassis, all kinds of different flavored lassis. I like the original kinds just sour, cold and refreshing and it has digestive properties too, so it'll help us later with you know some of the spicier foods we're eating here. And it's just really good for breakfast, good in your stomach. We just finished off with our lassie, jumping in a tuk-tuk, and heading to the next spot for breakfast today. We have come to have a little bit of a sweet for breakfast today. So this is called rabri, which is a saffron milk. There's all kinds of different spices in there, cardamom, some pistachios. So let's give this a try. Oh wow, it is quite sweet. There's a lot of sugar in there for sure. You can taste that saffron, it almost has like a floral flavor to it. Extremely creamy, nice and cool too. And I love how he's serving it out of this huge pot, oh man. That is surprisingly delicious, silky smooth. Mm. That saffron milk was really delicious, quite sweet again for breakfast. And actually, unfortunately, I was planning on trying something totally different there, which was not going to be sweet, but they were all sold out. But that's okay because the owner was really friendly, he gave us a nice little sample of that rabri. So now we're gonna actually go to get some real food for breakfast. So one of the best ways and the most fun way to get around Jaipur is by tuk-tuk. So we're in one right now, as you can see. And in Jaipur, for anywhere around the city, it's generally under 100 rupees. Uh, but you can haggle the price down more if you really want to. Um, we're stopped right now. We're not really sure why. Maybe he went out to have uh, chai, or maybe he's asking directions. We're not sure, but... Oh, here he is. <laughs> For breakfast today, we are having the famous Rajasthani Thali. What a Thali is, is sort of a big 
plate that has all kinds of different dishes on it. So I'm not exactly sure how many dishes we're going to be served, but this is something that's extremely popular to have here in Jaipur, especially the Rajasthani version. Our Rajasthani tali has arrived and this looks absolutely beautiful. All the typical Rajasthani cuisines are available here. And let me introduce everything we've got to you. We've got two different types of dal, which is a lentil kind of stew. Over here, we've got another type of curry. This is like a masala curry. We've got some rice, of course. This is called churma, which is a batter or like a flour that is mixed with ghee, which is purified butter. And then we've got some pickled chilies there, which look nice and spicy. A red chutney, um, onions. We've got two of these bati, which are a staple of Rajasthan province. They are also like gram flour and dal. And then they are mixed with, again, that ghee. We've got two different types of chapati. And then we've got this papad, which is like a hard bread. Let's start with this chapati here. You can see it is just covered with that ghee. That delicious looking ghee. And I'm gonna dip it in this dal here. And let's give that a try. I'm starving. Oh yeah. Mmm. It's got a little bit of a spice. That chapati is so buttery. Let's actually try one of these bati here. I'm just gonna break this up. So the way of doing this, I believe, is you break this up into small pieces. And then I'm gonna take some of this other doll here. And let's try this here. Mmm. That bati is incredible. It has such an amazing texture, really crispy and crunchy on the outside, but falls apart in your mouth. And it does a really good job at soaking that up. Let's try some of this churma next. I'm not exactly sure what this will taste like, but let's try it out. Whoa. That is extremely sweet. That's almost just like sugar. It doesn't even taste like there's much else. I think there's a little bit of flour and it's kind of gritty, but that is pure sugar. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be eaten as dessert or kind of alongside everything else, but that is quite sweet. I'm gonna dip this chapati in some dal. This is what I really like here. Oh yeah. I'm gonna break a piece of this papad off and dip it in this curry here and give that a try. Mmm. That's like a chip almost. It's almost like a tortilla chip. And it's a little bit salty. That curry has a little bit of a sourness and a little bit of sweetness too. It's not spicy like the dal, but that is good. Mm. I like that papad. Working my way through this tali, and I have to say this isn't my favorite. It's a little bit bland for my taste buds, but I do like these curries here, and especially I like that dal. The churma is way too sweet for me, but I have to say everything is a little bit kind of dull, but that's okay. We're definitely gonna be eating a lot more here in Jaipur. So right now we're gonna head to get some chai. We have come to arguably the most famous place to have chai in all of Jaipur. This place is called Gulab G Chai Wall. And this place has been around since 1946. So that's over 70 years old. And this place is just famous for simply having chai. Apparently they were just telling me that this place was here before anything else pretty much in this area was even in Jaipur. So we've got our glass of chai here. It looks really good and it smells really good. So let's give it a little try here. Oh yeah, oh that is to die for. Well, the taste of that is so rich. I don't even know what he can do to make chai taste so delicious, but there are some secret spices going on in there that just give that full body flavor. And also we've got this here, which to accompany our chai is a butter bun. So pretty simple, just some butter and bread. Let's try that. A lot of butter, wow. Chase that with a little chai. Oh man, this is simply delicious. This place is super cool, super historic, and if you look behind me, you can see that the stall is actually kind of hidden and tucked away under a staircase of an apartment building. Makes it kind of unique and kind of a really cool experience to just sit outside this building and drink some chai. 
What one did you like better for chai? Yesterday, the Sahu restaurant or today's gulab tea? I really like this one. It's The other one is a little bit thicker, but this one has more flavor. It's a little bit more spicy and a little bit more rich. And actually at the very top, you can see that it's formed like a film and that's gonna be just packed with flavor. I would have to agree with Sabrina that I like today's chai better. Yesterday we tried one at a restaurant called Sahu Restaurant where they use buffalo milk. I'm not sure if they're using buffalo milk here, but that one was a little bit creamier. This one just has a better flavor. In my opinion, I'm with Gulab G, 70 year old chai stall. Finished off with our chai. That is just such a great way to relax and refuel here in India. I'm pretty sure all of India kind of runs on chai. So now we are going to head to the most famous of all sites in Jaipur, the Hawa Mahal. We made it to the Hawa Mahal. You can see behind me this absolute beautiful landmark of Jaipur. We're gonna go inside and tell you a little bit more about this place. What can you tell us about the Hawa Mahal? Well, I know it was built in 1799 and it's actually a five-story building and each story has a different purpose, basically. It was built kind of for the Rajput women who weren't allowed out in the streets to kind of look out and uh, catch a glimpse of what's going on in the city and the royal processions. So that's why they have these beautiful windows in uh, How every How many story. windows? 200. No, 900. 900? And 53. 953. This place is absolutely beautiful. Certainly worth the 200 rupee entrance fee. You can't miss it if you're in Jaipur. It's the center of the city and it's probably the number one landmark here. And I definitely recommend you come to give it a look. It is stunning. There is some incredible architecture here and it really feels like you're in kind of medieval Rajput India. Okay, I think it's time to go get some dessert after exploring the Hawa Mahal. Sabrina and I were just on our way to our next location and we were told by some locals that we shouldn't walk just quite yet because there is a whole gang of monkeys over there. So we're kind of just observing from afar. It is really interesting. I don't think I've ever been somewhere where there was monkeys in a city, a city of the size of Jaipur and the monkeys are just running wild in the city, causing a lot of trouble and picking through the garbage and whatnot. Everything you can imagine a monkey would get up to. So. We're just gonna wait and let the monkeys finish their business and then we'll cross. For dessert, we have come to try some Indian style ice cream called Kofi. This is a place called Ramchandra Kofi Bandar and we just ordered up our ice cream. This looks really, really interesting. There is some pistachios on there. There's some almonds. I think this might be some like saffron drizzled on top and then you can see the ice cream underneath there and I love pistachios and almonds so I'm guessing this is going to be good and I like that serve too on this leaf. So let me grab some of this, make sure I get some of those nuts and try that out. Mm. Wow, it's extremely sweet, wow, that is very sweet. There's definitely some saffron in there. It actually tastes very similar to the saffron milk we had this morning. Almost identical, but just frozen. That is quite good. I love those pistachios on there. Let's grab another bite. Mm. Oh man, it's very sweet. A little bit too sweet for me. And I feel a little bit of mintiness going on in there too. 
but that is nice and refreshing. I am a big fan of ice cream, so this should be a hit for me. That's a nice looking bite. Mmm. Oh wow. That is extremely sweet. Does it taste similar to that saffron milk? It does, it does. It has pretty much the same taste and it has a few crunchies in there, so it adds a new level of texture. Really nice. Jaipur is known as a city full of sweets, so there is a lot of things we wanted to sample while we were here. We just tried the famous kulfi and we are gonna head now to try another dessert. Our next snack is something that also is really popular here in Jaipur. This is called Moong Dal Barfi. It is made from a special type of yellow lentils and it is topped with uh, some, again, almonds it looks like and maybe some pistachios and it is packed with sugar and it feels nice and moist. So let me try a bite of this. Wow. Indians really like their sweet sweet. There's a lot of sugar in that. But that is so moist. It's really rich in flavor too. It has a nice kind of crunchy, but at the same time sort of saturated texture. And then I love, again, those pistachios and those almonds on top. And it's still a little bit warm. Let's try another bite. Mm. Oh yeah, kind of crumbles away in your mouth. Jaipur is known for having a lot of delicious sweets, so we are trying this before we head to the fort. Mm. It's got like a brown sugar texture. It's really nice. As Sabrina just mentioned, we are heading to another fort today. We are going to the Amr Fort, which is a really, really famous attraction here in Jaipur. And a little tip on the tuk-tuk drivers here in India, you can kind of bargain with them to be your driver for the full day. So we kind of hired a guy this morning, um, picked a price and he's waited for us at each of the stops along the way. So we've been stopping a lot for a lot of treats, but he's been really generous and we paid uh, 600 for the full day of driving. So pretty good deal. I feel like we've had a lot of tuk-tuk footage today. So let me just spin you guys to the Amber Fort. We made it to the Amber Fort. That was about a 35 minute tuk-tuk ride and we're gonna go inside, explore a little bit and tell you guys a little bit about it. We are inside the fort now. The price was 500 rupees per person. It is a little bit busy here, even though it's a Monday. It's a lot busier than the Nahargar fort that we visited yesterday, but it is really beautiful. And this place is certainly a lot bigger than the Nahargar fort. It's all made out of sandstone, which gives it this incredible kind of yellow, orange color. But it is really hot here in Jaipur. We are out here in the desert, so you could imagine, but it is beautiful. Check out this here. We are exploring the fort. It is absolutely huge and there's no kind of logical layout whatsoever to this fort. So it's kind of a maze to go through the whole place. <laughs> it is really beautiful and I definitely would not want to be here at nighttime because it would be really creepy. It would be so creepy. I mean like the rooms echo, you can definitely get lost. It's oh, really yeah. dark in these chambers. So yeah, I wouldn't want to be here at night. No. <laughs> Finished off at the Amur Fort. That place is absolutely humongous. We were only there for an hour and a half and I don't even think we saw 20% of it. You could spend a full day just getting lost in the ruins of the fort. We are gonna head back to Jaipur City now and we will catch back up with you guys when we go for dinner. For dinner tonight, we have come to the most famous non-veg restaurant here in Jaipur. This is called MM Khan and we are gonna get a whole meat feast tonight. We are 
sitting down upstairs at the restaurant now and all of our food has arrived and this looks absolutely incredible. Check this out here. We've got the chicken chungezi, which is their most famous uh, dish. So it is a, it's a curry of chicken. There's big drumsticks of chicken in there. There's uh, tomatoes, coriander, all kinds of different things, tons of oil, and it just smells so fragrant. Lots of chilies in there as well, and some big pieces of chicken. This is the mutton korma, which is more mild of a curry, and you can see those big pieces of mutton in there as well, still on the bone. This one is quite oily as well, but not as many chilies going on in there. And then this is our naan, which we'll be eating everything with. So let's dig into this. This looks incredible. Let's start with this chicken chungezi. I'm gonna grab a piece of chicken here and make sure I get some of that gravy with some vegetables. Oh man, that looks good. There are a lot of flavors going on in there. Definitely the ginger is the most predominant flavor. There's also lots of garlic and it is very spicy and quite oily as well. Let's go in for one more dunk into this gravy. Check out all that oil on top there and I can taste that coriander, all those spices. Oh man, that ginger in there. And it really brings out the flavor of that gravy. Next up is the mutton korma. I'm gonna peel some of this mutton meat off the bones there. Give it a little dunk in the gravy and let's try that. Mm. Oh wow. Totally different. Although those two dishes look very similar in appearance, the flavor is completely different. This korma has almost like a citrus flavor to it. It's much more smooth and I can definitely taste some cream in there, a little bit of sourness. I didn't get too much mutton, so let me let me go in for one more bite here. Grab some more naan. Try to grab a piece of mutton meat there. There we go. Let's try that. Oh man. That is some tender mutton. Oh man. I love the cream. This place is a meat lover's paradise. This chicken chungezi is ridiculously delicious. Certainly my favorite out of the two. That chicken is so nice and tender. And then just all the flavors coming from that curry. Oh man, let's have another bite. Mm. Wow. That was just packed with flavor. Okay guys, that's gonna be it for our entire day of eating here in Jaipur. We visited some really cool sites, probably the most famous in all of Jaipur, and we ate some delicious food. This meat feast we had tonight was particularly delicious. So that's it for Jaipur. We are moving now on to Delhi. So expect a lot more videos from India. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified when we post a video. Leave a comment down below what you thought the most delicious looking thing was today and hit the thumbs up button and we'll see you guys again very soon. Bye. Bye. That is like a bomb. It exploded in my mouth.